and welcome to the American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. From the moment shorthorn cattle landed on U.S. soil in 1783, they changed the landscape of America's cattle industry. With a unique combination of fertility, efficiency, and carcass quality, this breed is a popular choice for raising beef now and centuries ago. And for nearly 70 years, the Loving family of Kansas has used the shorthorn breed to improve their own herd and those across the nation. Shorthorns are uh, celebrating 150 years of being in the United States. They were the first registered cattle brought into the United States. They, and they were brought into this country to pull wagons and, and break sod. Well, they were the original all-purpose cow that, that pulled wagons, pulled plows, and then supplied milk and meat for those, those early settlers. America's first breed came over as a all-purpose uh, utility type cow. And as we've transitioned, uh, Loving Farms has been here 75 years raising shorthorns and shorthorn influenced cattle. A lot of the same principles today, the versatility, the utility of the shorthorn cow is the reason they've stayed 75 years here. Um, we've transitioned that more to uh, a meat quality, um, uh, feed efficiency, um, and a good mothering ability. They've just adapted over time um, from what they began as a good all-purpose breed to still today a good all-purpose breed. Through 25 years of feeding our own cattle out in commercial industry, in the commercial feed yards. We've been told that our cattle convert in the top 10% of, of all the feedlot cattle. And uh, so we started measuring that with GrowSafe feed efficiency system. The industry average, you know, runs in the six and a half to seven pounds of dry matter uh, intake per pound of gain. Now we're seeing animals that are getting down into the mid to low threes and in some cases the high twos for feed conversion and that's huge when you start t talking about taking 20, 30, 40 percent of feed costs out. Beyond feed efficiency, we found our shorthorn cattle can grade well. Uh, we've improved on that over the 25 years. We've been actually processing them, feeding them out. AI sires and, and herd sires at this point are all in the top 10% for marbling and our bulls. We found 95% of our bulls last year and our bull sales were in the top 25% of the breed for marbling. Our customers are looking for that. We can supply that. The shorthorns are naturally known for carcass grading ability. We're getting 95 to 100% choices and then you know 20, 20% primes or 30, 40% primes. I think our customers come to Loving Farms looking for that good all-around beef genetics. Uh, they want the maternal end without sacrificing the carcass quality that many commercial producers have built over the last 15 to 20 years. And I think the shorthorns bring in an element of feed efficiency that maybe has been lost in, in pursuing some of those carcass traits and some of those growth traits. Our, our cattle are well documented with all the customary birth weaning and yearling weights, but we go on way past that with carcass traits, with ultrasound, with feed efficiency. It's a, it's a full program of collecting data and, and making our product more accurate and more predictable. And that's, that's, what we wanna, that's what we wanna be able to sell to our customers is, is a program that is well documented and has the accuracy and predictability to do the things that, that the numbers say they will. I'm sure when those cattle came here, those, those people that brought them here and were using them at that time didn't know that they would be here in 150 years, and I think that's where we stand today. Um, but knowing that the shorthorn breed has been as adaptable as it's been um, over those 150 years gives me confidence to know that you know the breeders and the cattle um, have the ability to withstand 150 years. Loving Farms will host its 12th annual Predictable Genetics Proven Performance Bull and Female Sale on March 5th. Visit lovingfarms.com to see the full offering. 
America's first beef breed, Shorthorn, is a go-to for cattle producers looking to add performance and maternal excellence to their genetics. Next, we visit Paint Valley Farms in Ohio, where Lee Miller and his family have found success with the breed's legendary docility and carcass quality. The Shorthorn breed has been in the United States for 150 years. We're in this business because we love to raise Shorthorn cattle. Our focus is on raising cattle that have a commercial significance. We like the Shorthorn cattle because they do so many things really well. You know, we don't have some of the reproductive problems that other breeds have. We don't have some of the disposition problems that some of the other breeds have. Another hidden fact that is a treasure of our breed is marbling ability. The Shorthorns can marble right up with the best of them. We seek that out and try to use some of those cattle and try to improve on marbling. That's part of our goal. We raised Shorehorns because of the docility. The docility was the first thing that came to note. The fleshing ability, the extra rib that I got in those cattle. But as we had those cattle, we realized the maternal traits that came with that were really important to us. I think one of the real advantages that shorthorn bulls bring to the commercial cattlemen is an outcross option. Being a British breed, you, when you cross those back on the existing cow herd, you pick up a lot of heterosis too. Uh, there truly is uh, some advantages to bringing a British breed back in on the existing cow herd, and the results are, are really good. And for that reason, I think it's important. You know, I, I think these bulls work. This year, the bull sale is April 2nd to Saturday at noon. Uh, we're gonna be offering 70 shorthorn bulls, and that's gonna happen in Millersburg at the farm. When we're selecting bulls to put in our bull sale, we look at them phenotypically. You know, we wanna have an animal that's nice to look at, attractive and stylish. We want animals to be sound, structurally correct, and have a nice disposition. A lot of our producers that purchase from us. A lot of them are just small producers. They may only have commercial cows. So a lot of these herds are one bull herds. They've got you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 cows and they only need one bull. And so that bull's got to do it all. We like to be able to sell bulls that can go out and move like a cat out in the field and chase the cows on the hills or on the flatlands and be able to do it without getting injured. Last year, we sold 67 bulls in our sale. Those bulls averaged 14.1 inch ribeye adjusted to a year of age. They had 3.9% marbling and they had 3 tenths of an inch of back fat. When you can get cows that have some rib on them and they're forage machines, they'll spend a lot more time on pasture and a lot less time on feed. They will run pastures into probably early to mid-January before they ever see any feed. They've got to have capacity to be easy fleshing and make it for that, and then we expect them to breed back, and they do. We've got more fleshing ability and more substance and volume and muscle in these cattle that allows them to be able to do that. As a breeder, it's pretty neat to be a part of a uh, breed that's been around for 150 years, and so when I see my family growing up and spending time with me on the farm and around the cattle. That's why we raise cattle. We're going on, I believe, six years of the female sales and this is our fourth annual bull sale and they've went off quite successfully. So it's really, really rewarding to be able to contribute to the breed in that way. Be sure to check out the latest offering from Paint Valley Farms that will sell April 2nd. Visit paintvalleyfarms.com to learn more. Up next. I think it's really important if you want to have a strong junior association, you have to trust that they're going to do the right things, that they make the right decisions. You know, it's been said that the shorthorn breed uh, pulled the wagon west across the United States and then they were used to provide milk and cheese and butter and now beef. To have an animal that could do all three of those things is pretty unique. Shorthorn's docility makes them perfect for teaching the next generation the value of stewardship and hard work. After the break, we head west to visit with Hugh Mooney on The American Rancher. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the American Rancher. California agriculture is valued at nearly $50 billion. In 2020, cattle and calves represented $2.74 billion as the state's fifth most valuable ag commodity. Carrying on California's rich ag heritage is Hugh Mooney, who advises the California State FFA officer team and raises shorthorn cattle of his own. Let's see how America's First plays a role in the state's ag network. I think one of the true strengths of the American Shorthorn Association has been the connection with the Junior Association. It's under the umbrella of the ASA, but they're their own group and they make decisions on their own. And I think it's really important if you want to have a strong junior association, you have to trust that they're going to do the right things, that they make the right decisions. And I've been very proud of the junior board and the job they've done. And, and we have tremendous support from breeders all across the country. That's really one of the big strengths of our breed. Some of the characteristics about the shorthorn breed that are really valuable, you know, people who raise cattle, they need cattle that are docile, that they're able to work. So docility is an important thing. I think longevity and, and having cattle that can produce and raise a calf every year and breed back. And I think the shorthorn breed is solid, structurally sound, easy keepers, along with the whole fact that the association is really family oriented. I have lots of friends that are involved in multiple breeds and they comment all the time how nice the people are at the Shorthorn Association. You know, when they call our association, they feel like they're being treated well and, and they, they feel good about it. And I think that's important. Like any breed, you've gone through ups and downs and I think we're definitely on a trajectory to, to move forward. We are raising better cattle and we're paying attention to those things that matter and people are just starving for opportunities to cross cattle with another breed and I think the shorthorn breed's in a good position to uh, have an impact on the commercial industry moving forward and I think if we keep working hard at it and doing the right things and raising better cattle, we'll be there for another 150 years. Shorthorn, the breed that defined the American cattle industry. This year, the American Shorthorn Association celebrates a milestone achievement, a 150th anniversary. The breed's roots run deep, tracing back to England and Scotland. In many ways, the Shorthorn story is America's story. Let's go back to the year 1783. That's when the Revolutionary War ended and the first Shorthorn cattle were imported to our shores. Of course, Shorthorns originated in England. Around the year 1600, the breed developed in the Tees River Valley. The cattle were multi-purpose, providing milk, meat, and draft for farming. When they came to America, shorthorns were ideal for westward expansion. With pastures aplenty, farmers imported shorthorns from Great Britain. They were bred to longhorns and shazam! The quality of beef improved overnight. To preserve pedigrees, the first shorthorn herd book was established in England in 1822, called the Coates Herd Book. In 1846, the first American shorthorn herd book was published. Then, in 1872, cattle raisers gathered in Indianapolis and formed the American Shorthorn Association, creating the nation's first beef breed association. Today, the association is headquartered in Kansas City, and shorthorn cattle still produce some of the best beef in the business. Through it all, shorthorns have been known for their gentle nature. Their docility makes them a family-friendly breed, ideal for building a better future for families, communities, and country. After the break. This position means a lot because they've got to be worked and they've got to go through the chute. It makes a difference in how you handle cattle. The beef is excellent beef. Everybody who's ever bought any shorthorn beef from us has always come back. The marbling for shorthorn beef is exceptional. A few final words on America's First from shorthorn producers across the country. You're watching The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. 
There's no question, shorthorn cattle are an ideal choice for America's cattle producers. They're an optimal outcross for a British-based cow herd. They provide carcass quality, docility, and fertility. They get the job done. See why shorthorns are the breed of choice for these American cattle producers. I started in the shorthorn business when I was back in 4-H showing shorthorn heifers, showed cattle through high school and started with my dad and my brother and I farming. Shorthorns work good on this grass. They get out there, they graze. My dad liked them because when we got started, they were so gentle and he had always used a shorthorn bull and he that's what he told my brother and I. He says, boys, they're gentle, they're easy to handle. This position means a lot because they've got to be worked and they've got to go through the chute. It makes a difference in how you handle cattle. You know, they're just, they're just nice cows, they're good cattle. I think the docility is great. I think uh, maternal, maternal characteristics are, are the biggest standout. And I think that's why we, we really enjoy that. Shorthorns are great cattle to work with. They have good dispositions. They are getting to a point now where they're calving more easily. The beef is excellent beef. Everybody who's ever bought any shorthorn beef from us has always come back. The marbling for shorthorn beef is exceptional. Something that my family always really valued about the shorthorn breed is that not only are they good on the maternal side, but they also have very good terminal characteristics as well. And I think, you know, just how docile they were, easy to handle, and their performance, and that they fed out well, and they produced good quality beef was something that they really desired and they really liked about the breed then. The shorthorn breed has done such a good job in recent years keeping track of genetics. Dad and I talk about all the time utilizing our purebred genetic gene pool to optimize on heterosis and complementarity. The maternal makeup of the shorthorn cow is so good, you can cross them with Angus, Hereford, Gelbees, or limousines. We like them because of their easy fleshing ability. The cows milk good. The cows raise good big calves. They calve easy not had to assist a cow this year calving, and that's important to me. You know, it's been said that the shorthorn breed uh, pulled the wagon west across the United States, and then they were used to provide milk and cheese and butter, and now beef. To have an animal that could do all three of those things is pretty unique, uh, but it's also pretty unique what we're able to do in, the, in today's market as well. You know, it makes you feel proud to be part of something that's been around and stood the test of time. Going forward, the shorthorn breed, I really think that with the data we're gathering today and the more emphasis that more breeders have, I think it can re-escalate into a leading breed, both from a standpoint of, but also as an independent breed in the future. I think, you know, in the future, hopefully more people are going to see the value of shorthorns and adding those genetics to their operation because I feel that we have all the traits that are needed. And so I really think the last few years with some of the research and the projects that the association has been doing that we've positioned ourselves in a good place for the future. Thank you for joining us on this journey of America's First. Shorthorn, a family-friendly and economic breed that has shaped the U.S. beef industry. Visit shorthorn.org to learn more and to find a breeder near you. And to find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.